Hey guys, if you have a side hustle, you might be wondering what you should use for your accounting. I'm going to talk today about a free option for you to track your income and expenses. The advantage of using this website, this software to track your income and expenses is that at year end, when you're ready to prepare your tax return, all you have to do is print a few reports from this software and hand it over to whoever's preparing your tax return. In other words, this is a way to get your data organized and summarized so that it is easier for you at year end. And this is a free software, but there are some features that you would have to pay extra for if you want to use them. So your accounting would be free, which is basically just tracking your income and expenses related to your side hustle. Invoicing is free, but if you want to accept credit card or ACH payments from customers, you would have to pay a fee per transaction. And then if you want to use their receipts option, which is a mobile app, you could pay for that. And then they do have payroll advisory and coaching services also. So I really like this software for a side hustle where you might not be getting income every single month, or you might just not be getting income consistently, and you don't want to spend money every month on a software. This can be a really good starting point. So you would just click on your account and set up a new account. Once you set up an account, this is what your software is going to look like. There are tabs on the left to get you to the different features in the software. You can click on create new to create new transactions. And then there are some tabs that are paid for services, such as the payroll, receipts, wave advisors and tax filing. And all the tax filing is, is it takes you to a link to H&R Block if you want to use this service. And then down here on the bottom left, you'll see an option to set up credit card and bank payments if you want to accept those payments from your customers. So basically, I'm just gonna walk you through some of these tabs to get you started in the right direction. The first thing that I would recommend doing is going to your chart of accounts and setting this up. You are going to want to set up any checking accounts or savings accounts that you'll be using for your business or side hustle transactions. You'll want to set up any credit cards that you use for your side hustle, any income accounts. I have one set up here called service income. I think Wave Apps has a default one when you first set it up. I don't remember what it's called, but all you have to do is edit and you can put in your own description and your own name. And you can also set up additional income accounts. For example, if you sell different products or different services, you can set up an account for each one if you want to. And then under expenses, I would recommend skimming through these. Wave apps will already have some in here and you can tell which ones were already in here because they have a description. And then I added some as well that I felt might be relevant for purposes of this sample company. So this is a sample company that I use for creating videos and it I just added a few accounts in here, but you can see that it's a pretty good list of expenses already in here. And then if you sell products, you will want to set up a cost of goods sold account for the cost of those products that you sell. And if you have payroll, you will have these accounts that you use also. And then once you set up your chart of accounts, you'll want to decide if you want to connect any of your checking or credit card accounts to the software. And what this does, if you connect them, is it brings the transactions into the software so that the main details of the transaction are already there and you just have to add some of your own details. So it brings in a description, an amount, and the date. 
and you just change the category and add whatever other details you want to add. So it does make things go a lot faster if you connect accounts. However, I want to warn you that if you have accounts that have business and personal transactions mixed together, I would caution you against linking them. And that's just because the whole point of having this software and doing this work is to have your business or your side hustle transactions all together in one place, ready for your tax return, ready for your tax preparation. And if you have personal transactions mixed in there, then the reports you have are gonna be basically pointless. So you definitely don't want to have personal and business transactions mixed together. So I would recommend or highly encourage you to only connect accounts that are only used for your side hustle. So if you have a credit card that you only use for your side hustle, then yes, by all means connect that and it'll make your life easier using this software and tracking those expenses. But if you have a checking account and it's your personal checking account with a little bit of side hustle transactions mixed in there, that's gonna be really confusing and create a lot of extra work for you because you'll have to remove all the personal transactions or designate those as some kind of equity or draws account. And that just seems like a lot of extra work. So I just want to mention this. If you have any questions, if you're not sure, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I will try to point you in the right direction. And I do want to say that if you have a side hustle that you think might turn into a full-time job in the future, then you may decide to go ahead and set up a checking account for that side hustle so that you can have a separate account for those business transactions. And then um, you could connect it here if that was the case. I'm just going on my recommendations, but ask your CPA if you need further guidance than what I can give you. Okay, so once you have your account connected, then you're gonna to go to transactions. Now you can see that it, def it defaults to all accounts on one page. If you wanna look at just one account, like for example, if you just wanna look at credit card transactions, you would click on that. Same thing for checking, savings, or whatever accounts you have linked here. So I just wanna caution you of that because if you come in here and start adding transactions, you might accidentally add something to the wrong account and then it could get even more confusing. Now, if you have your account linked, the transactions are just gonna be here and you would just edit the category and edit any more details. You can click on this little drop down arrow on the right to edit more details in any transaction. And you can change the vendor, you can add notes, and you can even add a receipt. So you can edit any of these things at any time. But if you don't have your accounts connected, you'll need to add things manually. And up here at the top, you'll see add income and add expense. So I'm gonna add a couple expenses just to demonstrate. I would need to make sure the date is correct, the account is correct. I'm just gonna add some credit card expenses. And then you would want to add any details. If I wanna add a vendor, I can. If I need to add a new vendor, I can do that here as well. And I can add any additional details about that vendor if I need to. So notice that it does open up a new tab for me to add that vendor. Now I'm gonna come back here, give it a second, and it will bring in that vendor. And I wanna put in the amount, any notes, any receipts, I could add those. 
I could split the transaction if it was more than one thing. For example, if some of this was advertising and some was office expenses, I could split that if I want to. So let's say $100 was for a sign, but then I ordered some other things. They had some office expenses or office supply type stuff as well. I could do that right here. So I'm going to remove that, but I just wanted to show that to you. And then once I have all my details entered, I would just click on save. And then at any time I can come over here and I can edit that transaction or I can upload the receipt or I can delete it or copy it. And then also I just want to point out that you can add income here also. If you have income, maybe you're not using the sales and payments feature. You're not getting income through invoices. Maybe you have some sort of payment processing or you're getting money from a website like Amazon. Um, you could just add that income directly in here. So you don't have to use the sales and payments section. You can just enter your income right here. You would want to just put a description, put what account you're depositing this money to, put the amount and put your account. And you could put notes, receipts, anything like that as well. And just save it. And that's all there is to, to it. You can filter if you want to look for certain transactions. Like for example, if I wanted to look for all the expenses that I've categorized as meals and entertainment, I could just filter and then remove that filter by clicking on the X. I can sort in different ways. I can use this action bu button. And then of course I can edit these at any time. There are also buttons up here under more where I can add a journal entry. I can upload a bank statement and I can connect a bank account right here as well. So there's a lot of different options here. Let's go ahead and look at the sales and payments section. So if I want to send invoices to customers, I could do that over here in this section of the software. I would first need to have products and services set up. And you can see that I already have some in here. I'm just going to click on edit so you can see what I have, what it looks like. Now I have an entire video just related to creating invoices in Wave apps. So I'll link that video in the description so you can watch that video as well. So the nice thing about this software is you can send estimates and, or invoices. I'm going to click on all invoices here so you can see invoices I've already sent. You can create an invoice up here. You would just add the customer. And put in the details as needed. Now some of my items have hourly rates already included. Some of them do not. So if they have an hourly rate already included, the price pulls up here and I just have to change the quantity. And I can enter a description as well. Or if I want to add an item without an amount included, I could just edit the amount right here. There is a sales tax feature as well. That's a little beyond the scope of this video, but that is available if you need to use that. And I would just save and continue. This comes out as a draft and then I could approve the draft if I wanted to. I'm going to go back and edit. I want to point out that I have my default settings for payments to be due within 15 days. You can change that setting in the settings. So I just wanted to point that out. And then I can approve the draft here 
and then send the invoice or mark it as sent. This particular customer doesn't have an email set up, but I could add a customer email if I wanted to. And then I could also record a payment or charge a credit card, but I would need the payments option set up that I talked about earlier in the video to be able to charge a credit card and get paid from that customer credit card through Wave Apps. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as sent. Okay, and then if I go back to my invoices screen, you can see that it puts that invoice in the unpaid tab. And I can also go to all my invoices to see all of them. And I can record a payment by just clicking on record payment, put in the date of the payment, put in the payment method, and put in what account I deposited it to. I'm gonna actually leave this open for now, but I just wanted to show you really quickly how the invoicing works. And then for purchases, I could use this if I want to. This is basically to track vendor bills. This could be used if you like to track bills that you have coming due, so you can make sure they get paid on time, but you certainly don't have to use this Unless you're accrual accounting, if you are using accrual accounting, then you would probably want to do this. If you're using cash basis, this may be just extra work that you don't want to deal with, but it is an option. You would have to set up your products and services for vendors. I just have one set up for rent that's linked to the rent expense account, but you could set up whatever you want to set up here related to your business. And then before I end the video, I want to show you the reports. At year end, you would probably pull a profit and loss for whoever was preparing your tax return. You would just click on it and choose the date range that's relevant. I'm going to choose the whole year of 2023. You would choose cash basis or accrual basis, depending on what basis you used for your taxes. And then it may default to summary, but you would probably want to click on details so you could see all the different categories and the total amount in each category. And you may want to review some of these expenses just to make sure everything looks right. And to do that, you would just click on any of the tabs and it would take you to all of the transactions that that total consists of. And then all you would have to do is export this to PDF or CSV and give that to whoever prepares your tax returns. And then you can also look at different periods. If you want to look at each quarter, if you want to look at individual months, or even this week, last week, and so on, custom dates are available as well. If you just want to look at a small period of time to look at your progress in your side hustle. And then some other reports that you might look at would be the balance sheet, which shows your assets, debts, and equity. And then you might look at the cash flow statement, which just shows cash in and out during a specific time period and you would just wanna make sure your net cash change is positive. And then there are some other reports that may or may not be relevant to you. Sometimes the CPA will also want a general ledger, which is basically just a report with everything in it so that they can review everything. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know I didn't go into a lot of detail in this video, but like I said earlier, I do have additional Wave Apps videos on my channel, so definitely check those out, ask questions as needed, and thank you for watching.